I got laid off. I got fired. I got fired. But here's the thing: I was a binge guy. I remember seeing her at the local titty bar. I feel dirty right now, just telling it into a microphone. We're broken around here. The working man is a sucker. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Working Class Holes Podcast. I'm your host, Ed McGowan, here in the break room with my co-host, Josh Accardo. What's up, everybody? So Hello. that was fucking crazy. <laughs> we just did a half an hour of the show, and I forgot to press record. And I'm the stoner, and he's a sober dude. Oh How does that happen? Uh, you know, I, I just finished this show called White Lotus. Oh. Have you heard of this show? Everybody's talking about it, yeah. All right. I know now that I have a different kind of horniness to me, and I wanted to bring it up to you on the show. From that show, wait, wait, wait. So From that, that show, you watched the show and you were like, yes. "This is this is my kind the, of horny." Yes, it's my kind of sexy. The women they like. I've never found Aubrey Plaza. Like, I know she's pretty, but I've never found her sexy. Can I interject? Well, There's a great movie, Emily the Criminal. Okay, watch it, everybody. All she's right. fantastic. Very cool. So she's in the second season, even the men are attract like they really balance it where they're like everyone on the show is gonna there's someone for everyone, hotness wise. Okay. Uh-huh. Uh and I realized that I'm having a really hard time with how the outside sexual world relates to me in my new age. At forty two I am feeling like my desire and my want and the attraction to people is still as strong as it ever was. But to get to that urgency, I need a lot more stuff to be aligned. And I don't know if that if that's how women feel, like the depth of what they would need to actually go through with or to get to the point where they can't control themselves sexually, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. like uh, whatever that is for mm -hmm, them. You know, mm -hmm. for me, it's like not just the way they look, the age, the how they handle themselves, their business, their independence, like all that shit now is stuff I think about when before I never used to. And I I feel like now I'm at an age where like I was looking at Snapchat. And I, I really like a couple of these like only fan girls Snapchats or very erotic sure but they can't they don't show you anything really because they sell Snapchat. it yeah, but yeah, it's yeah. hot though right and i'm like man am i just because now i, <laughs> I have just, a kid and a wife and i i can't get i just think i feel very off i just like the idea of like you like yelling at your wife lauren like be like you don't even bring me flowers anymore <laughs> You don't even like it's it's just you don't even court me. I was, <laughs> I was on the couch with her can, yesterday. Can you just compliment me? Can you just tell me I don't look fat? I actually said to her, I go, I can't remember the last time you even touched me. What's <laughs> uh, going on with me, you're man? Totally, you're totally turning into I, like a yeah. I, my femininity is showing itself. The inner feminine. Mm -hmm. It's good you're in touch with your feminine side. That's what I was. Yeah. That's what I brought. <laughs> I brought to the show this week <laughs> is that that's it being in touch with your feminine side is like just not wanting sex all the time yeah right. but I, that's what I'm saying though that's what sucks is I feel like that part of me is so male still in the wanting grand sex. construct of what we think male is the want of it but here's the thing like what we talked about this before but the, <laughs> the first show the first did. show we just did yeah the whole first but like when you're 14 though like when you go through puberty as a guy like it's just that's that drive, that want for sex is like so. Yes. You've lived with it now for what? What's that? 26 years? It's wild. 28 years? Whatever. So for even if it's Fuck. physically waning, in mentally, it's still, it's you're so accustomed to I, thinking that. Yes. Way. And I think I'm also struggling with the reality that uh, it's not age, but how much in my past and in my life were people being attracted to me, how much that uh, meant to my self-confidence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the part that has been like a struggle is having to actually be self-confident. Yeah, 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 totally. You know, was, not was, relying on something. Confidence has always been a struggle for me throughout my whole life. And like when I found cocaine, that was like, ooh. Yeah. This is, oh. You feel like you run through a this, wall, yeah, right? This is, I mean, this is, oh, the instant confidence. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah totally. Uh, I mean, alcohol, yeah, but it, it's such a wild 
it's just like a stallion that I can only control with cocaine. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like the, yeah, the yeah. alcohol is just like so, I, I, it's, it's all over the place. There's confidence is in there, but there's so much other mayhem that comes with it. The cocaine is like fucking zeroes in and is like, yeah, dude, yeah. I could do anything. Well, you have those, I mean, we'll get to them eventually in the show, but like that amazing story about you being with a really famous person and just randomly <laughs> hanging with him the whole night and then him jacking your stash at the end of it all. Oh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. You just have yeah, some yeah. really, about that. the yep. thing is, is, you know, yeah, you shouldn't be on drugs because obviously you can't handle it. it you know, your life would be over. Uh, but in the same hand, you go, well, you also have lived this really insane life and because it brought out a piece of you that is hidden yeah, yeah, yeah. when you're not yeah, totally. you know, inebriated or yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever. I mean, I'm, I moved to New York. Like I was I had all the we you know, I have this list of all these shitty jobs I had before I was uh like before I turned thirty and um I like it's like twenty twenty garbage jobs on there on that list. <laughs> I wonder when I saw you bring it in today, I was like, Okay. He's bringing and, uh, in notes, nice. <laughs> but uh and then I moved to New York you know, I finally graduated college after 10 years. I moved to New York, and uh, the second night I was here, I met some dudes, and like that, those one of those dudes worked in film. He was an editor, assistant editor, and like he like kind of helped me get on the path of like, and you know, we were doing cocaine the whole night. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I owe yeah. like that, you know, some of the doors that have opened to me have been through just like the chaos of like drugs and stuff like that. You know, there's also been some doors I've walked through that I wish I didn't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, but yeah. yeah, it's um, yeah, it's a mixed bag. It's yeah, a that, good time. That addiction shit, man. There's a lot of it in me that I've done and that have really hurt me, but there's a whole lot of it that was fucking awesome. Sure. I, yeah, I, yeah. Sometimes I miss it. A lot. I'm and you know what's funny is I wouldn't when I say that, it's okay to miss something and not, not oh, want to yeah. trade your life for it. Like I wouldn't want to trade anything I have now to have that. Right. But, yeah, yeah. Ooh. No, it, that's like I don't have regrets. I mean it's like it all led me to where I am right now, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's nice to get a little sometimes I wish I could just get a little taste. <laughs> of the overall buffet, a buffet of what that was. Not one, you know, not when, heavy. It's a when taste. you said taste, I could taste a little right. like <laughs> crack smoke. I was like, it would, mm. you know what I mean? When I said just a taste, <laughs> just a taste, just get my brain there again, you know, let me get three hours. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> ah, man. Um, all right. I, I had this fucking. I had some shit going on in my life right now, and I'm a dad, and it was just Father's Day. And oh I, yeah, happy yeah, Father's oh, Day, bro! Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we we're, you know, we had to go to this wedding upstate for the weekend, and you know, it's just the dog was allowed, so we brought the dog, and they, it, it, it was hard because you know when you're not in your regular space, this kid, and you have a dog that you yeah. love and take great care of, you know it. It's a routine based thing, and when the routine is fucked with. Everything's fucked with. Everyone's sleep patterns are fucked up. And traveling with them is not easy. But we get there, and it's just like there are all these little moments throughout the weekend, like the dog enjoying herself, running around this really nice property in the wilderness, and the kid loving outside, and all this cool shit that happens. And then, you know, Sunday comes, it's Father's Day. I'm unpacking my bag, and it hits me that I, the whole day, the whole weekend, I have not thought once about my dad. Oh, wow. And it was like, man, I can't remember the last time. Because him and I don't talk anymore. Right. And it's been years. But I still, on Father's Day, would think about him. Uh huh. Uh huh. And uh -huh. I'm sure last year, my first Father's Day, I thought about him. But this year, it just did not occur to me that he was my dad or that I had a dad. Uh huh. Uh huh. And that yeah, kind but of. You're a dad now, dude. Yes. That, that's, I, the thing. that's a transition. That's a thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's like you. It's like you. I mean that happens. I mean that's how it happens, right? Like you, you like I said. I remember saying that to my sister. She was like having some some troubles, like arguments with my mom and stuff like that. And I was like, yeah, but you know, this is your you have a new family now. Mm -hmm. Like I'm your brother, I'll always be your brother. But yeah. like you have a new family now. Mm -hmm. You have two girls, you have a husband. This whole thing that's like that takes you know, precedence, right? But, it, yeah, it really does. But I I think because of the the fact that I the reasons why we don't speak and the reasons well, why yeah. it was a a weird thing because not even it, he didn't make it into any of those yeah, yeah, yeah. you know ashamed father day thoughts right it was weird because yeah. you know the show makes me think about a lot of you know obviously the 
jobs and our gigs. And one of the jobs that I brought up before was like used car salesman. I thought about this time we had to pick my dad up because he had multiple stints of being a used car salesman. Wherever he was the lowest, like when he was, when I was a kid, he was really fucked up on cocaine before he got, and then he got straight. And then when he got more fucked up on drugs, he went back to used car salesman. But he was really fucked up on coke and he was a used car salesman and he was like early 80s, beige, open open shirt, real guinea, chest hair, gold chain, black mustache. He's wearing fucking uh, midway boots with the zipper on the side, <laughs> like Corinthian <laughs> leather, the fucking heel, just getting in the car smelling like Marlboro Reds, smelly feet and sweat and cologne mixed oh, together dude. all in one. He just lived it. You knew he probably fucked around and finger banged somebody that day. Like He just was that <laughs> dude in the car. I just remember thinking, oh, man, this guy is the coolest motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. I was like four or five years old going, damn, he gets in, his fucking hair, he runs his hair through his like this softish John Travolta Saturday Night Fever hair he had, and he would blow it with his breath and get it in place with a cigarette still in his mouth. This guy just... What do you think the uh, the the current day version of that is? Because I, I feel like back in like the 80s, those guys were fucking studs, it right? Was, Just they were, dirt bags, oh my God. scumbags. And as kids, I remember looking up, and thinking, man, this guy's a fucking awesome. Cool. Yeah, he just yeah. a garbage so bag. So cool. But do you think kids, gold on and shit? What are kids like? You know, like what are like five year old, six year old kids look up to now? Like, what do they think's cool I mean, now? Bitch shit. Like, I, I don't. <laughs> it's hard because I'm so old school. I know. But I also am, I've been through th- through so much therapy. I know that my dad. That's not like cause I remember the point I was trying to make is that I was a used car salesman. And I think during I think that is when it was bequeathed or whatever. It was, Here you go, my son. <laughs> you, you have inherited this. I now give this to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, this lifestyle is now yours. Some people get handed the company. I get handed the gold chain. Let me take this off, my son. There you go. The Corinthian leather boots. This, this one's for stash. you. This is for your seventh birthday, and this one's going to be for your eighth I birthday. Mean, and it's stunk too. That guy's oh, feet. God, I bet, dude. Just like when you, when you really break it apart, you're like. God, put on some better socks. Like, you're just like the <laughs> shit that dudes do. That or not? Miss don't wear them every day. Every day. Let them air out. You know what I mean? This guy's hoping it across the fucking used car lot. It's got him on 18 hours a day. It's fucking leather with his, his, his mini little socks. Oh God. Oh God. I could smell it now, dude. It's so and disgusting. and like with that cigarette stench oh, too, with man. that Marlboro stench. Yeah, uh, and he would wear the most cologne. <laughs> Damn, dude. <laughs> and it did, but like it did the opposite of like covering it up. It just like mixed oh, it together in like this toxic the, fucking cloud. It, hey, you might. That was Spanish fly, though, man. Women love that shit in the 80s. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's all Spanish fly. Every was. like trashy that's chick a, in 30 miles sweat. shows up for that. <laughs> Just a bunch, just a dirt bag, just a brat. You just sop like a really dirt bags, uh, like his. Yeah, brow. I just work. Like this is the Spanish twelve hours and on a Saturday in San Diego when it's ninety five degrees, wearing <laughs> Corinthian leather boots. I'll still bang you, even though I'm just stinking everywhere. So Those dudes are just we're fucking the women what, too. Let's let's just do it. Do I don't care you where your kids, job. You think the kids are looking up like uh, like what, the big trucks? Because you see those big trucks now. Do you think that's what's cool? What do you mean big trucks? Oh, like you've never seen those guys with the uh, the side view mirrors that like stick out like a foot off of the truck and the truck uh, sits up real you're, high. You're saying the, that that's the equivalent of uh, you think a kids, greasy used yeah. car salesman who gets think, a lot. It was yeah, like you a think kids are like, gift the gab. Remember that guy on the road this weekend? <laughs> <laughs> that was the best. <laughs> this guy's got the real gift the gab. <laughs> we had these really great <laughs> audience members. Uh, where were we at? Wallingford? Connecticut, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we were in Walling for Connecticut. Shout out. Uh, what was the name of that joint again? New New England Cider Company. Yes. Uh, and they're they're really cool. Should, get that. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> this she never does that. This bitch, and she does it tonight. I'm in the middle of like, yeah, they were great. Here's a plug. <laughs> Anyways, this guy, <laughs> this guy was like really New Yorky, or but but from. But lives in Connecticut. He lives in Connecticut. His friend was from Arizona, right? Yeah, or New, or New Mexico. Mexico. Yeah, but he 
He was uh, really, I think he ran out of compliments. Because, you know, after you do so much small talk, and I'm sitting there There was a, a lot drink. of small talk There was a lot of there. small talk. I think yeah, we yeah. ran out of stuff. And, uh, I had so, to walk oh, away. At one point, he just looks, <laughs> he got quiet. Well, because you guys are all drinking, too. So, like, you have a little bit of that. Yeah. It's the thing. Yeah, and that's I, how I was finishing a drink. That's I have why to we step, were. I have to step away sometimes. Like, because I'm just, like, I just, I'm with a bottle no, of water. I, I, I don't like, blame you. Yeah, yeah, It's yeah. not the same. Talking to other people drinking. You can kind of. I was, remember, you, I didn't start drinking until I was, like, 26. So yeah, you can have that quiet. I remember that. Just everyone just, like, taking the sip, kind of enjoying the drink yeah. thing. Where I'm just, like, hydrating. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, like, it, I'm going to walk around. So, finally, just to fill in the gap. Because, you know, when you're, some people just want to fill they can't. The quiet is the quietness is is deafening. I I was there for it. I honestly think he was. He meant it genuinely. He, he just did. said it in such an old timey way. It was really funny. It was hilarious. He's like, this guy has the gift of gab. <laughs> I'll tell you, this guy. Well, it's because it was quiet, and you were filling it with like conversation. Man, this guy got the gift of gab. <laughs> It's fantastic. It's one of the greatest compliments I've ever been given by my <laughs> grandfather and this man who was around my age. Thank you, brother. I do have the gift of gab. Yeah, and cool. that's why I fucking excelled at the family business, used car sales. Used car sales, yeah. How to earn a buck. How I to worked, skim a buck. I worked on a couple of used car lots. Uh, it's not even on my list. My cousin ran a business. No, my cousin didn't run a business. His, his buddy did. Oh, Tommy McGowan? Tom, no, Jimmy Crawford uh, is my cousin. But the, um, Jimmy Crawford. The, uh, they, his buddy had like a um, power washer. Remember those power washers? I don't yeah, isn't know that the one where you fucked the lady's house up with it? You did oh, did, side, I tell, did we talk about that on the, this already? I think on a, on a, on on a, a ride. On a road? Yeah, yeah on yeah, a road gig. Yeah, yeah so, gig. Uh, so they had, this is before I had my own access to my own power washer. But this was when I was an employee. Uh, but yeah, yeah. So they had these power washers. They would go to used car lots and like just a dollar a car and spray them down. And, you know, just wash. Yeah. And then, the, you know. I would just like walk by with like one of those chamois, the little sham, yeah, sham thing, yeah. and you just and just like wipe it off. Or yeah, whatever you, it was. And you just like you just like wipe it off. You don't use soap or anything like that. Just spray them down, wipe them off. And uh, the thing was, like, if you dropped your chamois and it picked up a bunch of gravel, and then you dragged oh, it across yeah. a car, <laughs> <laughs> you just ruined the paint job. <laughs> you just got to bounce. <laughs> My cousin's like, yo, what are you doing, dude? You, try, you, you can't pick that back up. I'm like, what? And he looked at a couple cars. He's like, all right, guys, we got to hurry up. <laughs> we got to get out of here. <laughs> kids scratch shit. Kids scratch a couple of cars. We got to go. <laughs> I mean, that's like a thousand dollars is at a minimum the repaint because you can't just do the hood. Yeah, I have no idea. You got to match sure, the whole car. I'm sure it was like. I'm sure they just fucking sharpied it in. Right? Oh, yeah. Don't they do that? Don't <laughs> they have a fucking asshole? There's this, uh, I don't know, strip mall. Op- they There was only a canyon. It was like a late 80s. And they made a little strip mall. And, you know, this guy opened up a card shop in boom times. Card? Card, like memorabilia, sports card yeah, like, shop. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, baseball, baseball cards. cards. Uh-huh. And that's when baseball cards, it was Huge. like the early 90s when Huge. it was just massive. Dude. So we would hang there, and the guy hated me. Because we weren't ever buying anything. We were just hanging out but you know we were earning money like we would do whatever like a little odd bullshit to get enough money to buy like a F- Fleer ultra you know with a 92 with the yeah, gloss the Fleers, on the Fleers them. were the good ones oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. i was yeah. a tops boy but uh the Fleer was the, they were the later good ones. on i realized i was more of a tops man myself but that year with the smell of the gloss you would uh-huh. open up the and then they would get like the that was kind of the birth of the specialty card and oh, okay. I pulled one out. It was a Frank Thomas, and I ended up getting doubles. And I was broke, you know. And I wanted to buy like McDonald's or some shit. I used to sometimes try to sell them just to get enough money to get Jack in the Box or something like that. Because <laughs> when you're fucking poor, my wife and I were talking about this. The only luxury in your life is fast food. Oh, there is no vacation the best. to Disneyland. There's it just was fucking. The best. If you can afford a Jumbo Jack combo meal, you were like. To, that was my champagne. And if, like, my dad let me get a shake? Seriously. A shake instead of a that, Coke? Oh, oh, that was on another level Bro. of celebration. Dude. Uh, so I I nicked the fucking corner on this thing, man. And this dude had kicked me out of his shop a bunch. 
Uh, my friend ratted me out because I tried to steal a pack of cards. <laughs> I more did it for the rush, though. I yeah, wanted to like, yeah. impress this my buddy, and he yeah. fucking ratted me out. And the dad brought me down there to apologize. Like, my parents would have never made me do that. <laughs> Whose dad? The kid's dad who ratted me out. He was my best friend, and my parents weren't around a lot. They worked, and this guy worked like from home. He was some kind of carpenter or some bullshit. So he had a lot of access to us when we were hanging out. We'd have to hang out at his house and oh, around him. Man. So he felt compelled to teach Josh a life lesson and brought me, and the dude threatened to kill me, an adult. <laughs> He said, if you steal from me, I'll fucking kill you. Like, I would love to find that guy right wow. now. He's like on the list of like the 10 dudes that, like that I, I want to beat the shit out of that, my childhood. Like Steve childhood. Buscemi scene from, what was that? <laughs> he crossed, <laughs> Billy Madison, he's cro- that guy needs to get crossed off. That motherfucker, if I find that dude. But he uh, was like, you steal from me, I'll fucking kill you. You can't come back to the shop for three months. So when I went back, I colored in this tip of this frank thomas specialty card with the black sharpie sold it to his ass oh. and he fucking looked at it for a minute i thought i was gonna get caught but yeah. i was like fuck you bro that's fucking balls i like oh, that i'm a 11 year old kid i too. love like, that fuck dude that, guy. that is balls yeah, yeah yeah because you know now eat you've, it you've doubled down on oh this guy. yeah like because if he catches you here yeah, it's good he's probably gonna hit me yeah, yeah yeah i'll probably get hit by this guy yeah yeah, yeah. but oh, instead i got made five bucks off of him and i ate a fucking Two chicken, ta- two no, two tacos and a chicken sandwich. It was a dollar meal. I love it. You Jack remember that meal? That's a that's a victorious meal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would remember yeah. that meal too. Yeah, I remember like the dipping sauce. You know what I mean? It's like all it's that, like, yeah, the yeah. buttermilk uh, ranch, <laughs> all of that shit. Loaded up. I'm fucking winning tonight. I once bought uh, a knockoff Calvin Klein cologne from a guy in that same Jack in the Box for 20 bucks. The guy was selling guy cologne. smell like shit, this guy dude. selling cologne in a Jack in a Box? Wow. Wow. I fucking bought. Wow. I thought it was like, uh, and I was telling this dude I was with, like, well, doesn't this smell good? So and this guy second. just could not tell me was how fuck it. Was he like perched up at a, like a table? Did he have like a. Well, like he a, wasn't even. They kept kicking him out. <laughs> of course. And he had did. to keep buying fucking Jumbo Jacks and tacos and shit, asking and for what water. Was his, what was his wares like? What, like, did he have he like. Always was it like, like a, a cardboard. He would take it out. He. Spray it up. He like, so he had like in a bag or uh... it's clear bags. <laughs> Selling fake completely cologne. clear. Selling knockoff cologne. Ah, that's amazing. God damn it! Dude, it stunk buy... so bad. How often were you buying it now? Oh, I did it the, just the once, <laughs> oh, and okay. it, people were like, they couldn't be near me. <laughs> I, like, I repelled women in a way that I never had in the past or the present. Like, what is that? The I don't know what that is. Is that Jack in a Box sauce or what? It's like, what? This guy's been stealing the goods. I don't and even fermenting it and making this fucking knockoff shit. God, that has a hint of buttermilk ranch in it. It makes you want mm, fries man. for some reason, though. Oddly enough, you go for a jumbo jack. <laughs> I want to vomit and eat a jumbo jack standing near you. This has been a long life of just just bad breaks and bad moves, my friend. Wait, so did you wear? Uh, I, I want to get to the cologne though. So what? what so you got this is Calvin Klein. Wait, it smelled like he. How old are you? It was supposed to be Calvin Klein Eternity or something. How old are you now? Like twelve? Oh no 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 no! This is years later. I'm a teenager. <laughs> It's like it's like I could not buy a date, dude. That's amazing. How can you be the the quarterback of the football team and team captain? Uh huh. Basketball team, baseball team, and track team. I'm captain of the track team. Damn, dude. Fucking ass. No pussy. Wow. Did not lose my virginity until eighteen. Like my story. Oh wow. Yes. Wow wow wow. Huh? Because of shit like that. Like my, like my face, I have f- pretty good skin, but when I was a teenager, my mom was like, you know, I was getting zits. She's like, you should scrub your face. Yeah, yeah that's what my and parents told me too. And put rubbing alcohol yeah, on yeah, it yeah, and that's what I was dry told. it out. Yeah, it just made me have more zits. Oh, I didn't. You're supposed didn't, to use like a face wash. I didn't have a lot of acne, your but face. like I was told to like scrub my face. Yeah, I got yeah. a I had like a loofah. Yeah. A pumice stone. That's why I look like this. I have fucking pumice stone on my face and nose. Just a granite. My teeth. Oh, yeah, yeah. my lips. Fucking. And I had these jacked teeth, so I didn't want to smile. I would try to always hide them when I would talk. Like, 
Uh, just a so your yeah, whole just a, like just yeah, a you like ball like of wince. insecurity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had it all. So the so the Calvin Klein was just trying to mask that all that. I uh, just a cheap. I just had the, a, uh, a wannabe rich kid. I had the Drakkar Noir. Drakkar Noir. Drakkar Noir. Yeah, yeah, Drakkar Noir. That mixed with weed is like the high school scent. I remember. Yeah, dude. We had this guy. I don't know if he would piss his pants or he pissed on his own clothes, but he had always. That smell, Dracar Noir, weed, and piss. And I remember, <laughs> he was a black dude, and I remember he would take the bus in, uh, and I, we would uh, be outside in the morning because he'd get off the bus. We'd all have to wait to go into school. And this other girl, I guess, rode the bus with him, this black girl, and she was like, how come all you smell like piss? Just <laughs> piss, piss. You just smell like piss. And I'm not being racist with that impression. She just really hated this kid, and he really did smell like piss. And I just remember... Feeling so happy, <laughs> so I told this guy he smelled like piss. Oh, dude, just watching somebody get yelled at for smelling like piss. Oh my god! I mean, to this day, I, I love people hilarious. getting yelled at. It's yes. so funny to me. Dude, we had being so, embarrassed. Just watching people getting. It just made me think of this story. So I went to Catholic school for the whole my all of my like uh, eighth grade all the way to and then Catholic high school. So like thirteen years from kindergarten to, to twelve. In third grade. We had a nun. They, you know, they ran. They were running out of nuns even back then. Uh, they were running about, back in the seventies. <laughs> That's a joke from the podcast. I didn't record. I uh, no, back in like when I was in third grade. Uh, they, so they were running out of nuns. You get your first holy communion in third grade. So they were like, it was very important that we had a nun. So they they dusted this old nun off from retirement. She must have been. Eight, Where do they go when they retire? Where do they put them? They just stay sit in that convent. And I think they just kneel what in a corner. Te- what a terrible life Horrible. to choose. Awful. As a priest, you could see those guys are like, they're they're in there hiding out, doing terrible shit, most of them. Yeah, they're awful. A lot of yeah, them. So the they get a lot more power fun. power and clout and all that shit. Yeah. The, nuns, they man. Get it's nothing so, out of the deal. Uh, it's such a, a repressive. It's a bummer. Yeah, it's like, I mean, it's like, you, you talk about, people talk about like Islam and how repressive that is, but this nun stuff is like, ugh. They just beat the shit out of kids for years. That so was like their comes joy. In, dude, so she comes in and she is old school, man. Oh, and man. she is taking no shit. And we're kind of like a wild class. And she's like smacking us with a ruler, like all, all kinds of, she knocked Anthony Carbonell's tooth out, dude. Like just smacked him, tooth fat, like shot out of his mouth. She made this one kid, there was a, there was a, uh, <laughs> There was Cro- a, like cross checking people <laughs> with a ruler, <laughs> like the Broad Street Bullies. You fucking <laughs> Sister Mary Francis just knocked Tommy Carbonelli's tooth across the floor. <laughs> oh, and a vicious hit! <laughs> Two announcers on his side. Oh, 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 he's gonna feel that tomorrow. Sister <laughs> Mary Francis. She made this one kid sit in the corner. Uh, she dumped. He was like the slob kid. She dumped out his desk. And made him sit next to the trash can in his, like, dude, he had to sit next to the trash can in his, like, just dump of his desk. All this shit that was in his desk. She made him sit there for, like, a week, bro. For, like, a week. Dude's crazy. I don't know what, I, I can't even imagine what that did to this kid's fucking mind. Because, like, every day, I like. how many people who have, uh, want to be submissive just got boners right now. <laughs> I love that that's where you went with it. But, like, as a 10-year-old kid, we walk by and we're like. Throwing out my like trash from lunch, I'd be like, "Hey, Sean," <laughs> you know, just feeling so bad for him. Just I wonder where that dude closet. is now. I know he probably has some weird shit going dude, on. Dude, that was wild, dude. She fucked that kid up. They used to, Catholic Church. They, I mean, you just hand your kids over, and they're like, "We're just gonna fucking." Fuck these kids up. The nuns are gonna beat the shit out of them. Yeah. The priests, who knows what they're gonna do? Yeah, um, right. What a fucking hellhole. Yeah. But I have to say, like, when it first happened, just like the piss getting yeah. yelled at, like, when she dumped his desk out. That's the other side of it. Hilarious. Okay, like, so that's the other side first, of it, For the first, like, too. minute, five minutes of it, that five minutes was hilarious. And then it was yeah. just like, oh, my God, she's going to make him sit there for a week? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> It got yeah. really sad. So I'm raised, born and raised Catholic. I was like you, First Holy Communion, that whole nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's the other side of it is you're like, there's so much discipline involved and respect for your elders rooted in that. And I'm not, I mean, I, 
I'm an abused dude, so I'm always going to go really hard on abuse because I've lived with it, and I think it's the worst thing you could ever do to the human spirit. I think it should be. I think you should be killed. Like I'm, I am ex- an extremist when it comes to child abuse. Yep. That being said, there is a level of respect and discipline rooted in that, and you can see why people trusted the process because it really does instill something in you if you believed in it and because people were so like regimented like that lady you knew life was not easy like you saw someone get their comeuppance that kid sitting around his trash and i remember for me that's why shit was funny you're kind of like finally someone gets theirs well i would say this too the the fact that there's rules like in a catholic school there's much, so much more rules so when you're breaking rules like it's fun oh it's a turn on it's fun yeah, you know yeah, what i mean yeah. like laughing in church was like such like like once it started like we would just it was like a fucking group of hyenas man like yeah. once somebody started laughing yeah. like everybody's just on. laughing and now you got like 12 like you know 10 11 uh, 12 year old boys just yeah. like fucking laughing and the teacher going nah, 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 you know, yelling at you which then even makes it uh, even more oh, hilarious it's the best yeah, yeah, yeah. it's the best yeah. I uh I was thinking about how many women I slept with at jobs I worked at before the show I was like you know what's an interesting way to talk about a job why why is that is it because you're always around them that yeah, that happens i mean you're spending time together i mean well we were talking and you i don't you yeah. don't feel that way yeah but i didn't get I, here's my go over your jobs so let me let, no i'm just looking at like where did i hook up with uh <laughs> i mean you should see this list ed you should put it in the edit <laughs> it's like a quick flash it's we, like 20 jobs deep it, yes 20 jobs before i was uh uh 28 uh, i can't wait to talk about wing wall tomorrow next next episode. wing wall we'll talk about next yeah, time yeah, yeah that's, that's my one. first job yeah yeah, yeah yeah uh do we talk about the carnies we were talking you about said the it the last up yeah with a carney one you yeah. were with carney save that one the carnies that shit's funny janitor at my high school didn't get laid there <laughs> <laughs> that's not a that's not a winner so you're going to the high school no, and you're the it's janitor. It's my high school. I'm a janitor at my own high school. So like a John Hughes movie. <laughs> yeah, it's like a John Hughes movie. Yeah, yeah, dude. Like I would get <laughs> where the kids are embarrassed to say that they know you. Like the lonely kid talks to you, and then I kind of got away kids. with it. Everybody was kind of like, "Yo, what's up?" I mean, they were, they were probably laughing at me behind my back. <laughs> How old were you? At uh, tenth, eleventh, twelfth grade. Like all, for so you, that's what I was asking you. Yeah, you were an actual student. Yes, and janitor. And janitor. And they knew this. Like, would you have to put on your janitor, like, z- overall went to pick up the lunch stuff? No, I would cla- just wear <laughs> jeans and I, like... <laughs> pull you out of class. Hey, we need uh, Eddie McGowan. We got a... Uh, <laughs> hey, we we gotta, have two plugged up toilets. We need Eddie. Uh, I got all hands on deck, Ed. Hey, Eddie, uh, after math class, grab that bucket. <laughs> well, Eddie's taking his SAT. He don't need those. Come on, Ed. Let's go. Get the plunger. And on your way, stop and grab a couple of urinal cakes. I just... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> how how do you have the life you have knowing that from birth and like if they're saying to you in high school there's no issue with Eddie working here as a janitor <laughs> around his peers <laughs> can you imagine going into an office job and you're also gonna do the janitorial service <laughs> like you get done working with everybody you're like all you're right like, gotta, okay guys have a I great gotta, weekend yeah, yeah, see ya hey and also hey, can you do me a favor <laughs> Could you not like you see somebody miss something? Yeah, like see, I got the nacho from the lunch we had. It's all over the side of the can there. If you can get in there. When I was smoking, get in there. So I would smoke, and the boys were you know smoking uh, in school, and I would see kids throw their cigarettes in the urinals. I was like, Yo, guys, come on, come on. I gotta clean that later. <laughs> you know how hard they are to get out? Throw them in the toilet. You just be showing all this janitor just, wisdom on them. It's like two steps. It's like two steps. Can we just, guys? <laughs> And it's automatic, no pussy, because no girl wants to be like. So I'm dating Ed, the the boy janitor, <laughs> the boy janitor. That's your superpower. <laughs> well, the boy luckily, janitor. so luckily it was an all boys school, so I had no, oh, so some. I had no like that would have been. I don't know that I would have been able to do it if there but was. But then you also had like girls. a co mingle with another cap. Yes. Yeah, they all knew I was then, a janitor. Yeah. <laughs> Because the guys, they don't want the competition. I'm telling any girl that looks at you, I'm like, 
oh, that guy's so cool. He fucking cleans the toilet. <laughs> I was taking a shit the other day, and he kept spraying all this. <laughs> he just... I would really lay it in. Oh, dude, I did. And you know what the, so the big thing was buffing the floors. So you ever see that? Like the, uh, the buffer, you know, like. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You get, did you ride it? Huh? Can you ride that? No. Oh, I that's think like they probably joke, have right? it now. Oh, okay. Maybe they have them now, but they were like, they had a long handle with like a big. Uh, yes. Yeah, so I remember that. Yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah, but those were always, job. and then like the football team would come running that they would come. I'd be like, Hey, 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 what the fuck? You're just a 40 year old man. <laughs> Forever in tenth grade, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah, smoking grits, uh, <laughs> buffing a floor, yelling at guys with dirty cleats, hanging out with the actual janitors because there was actual like yeah. lifer janitors, and you know, with a guy with no front teeth and just you know what I mean, like just having conversations with him. I, I mean that I don't want my son. That's a job you get when you just you weren't cut out for finding a better job. Janitor at a high school. It's just a job you get when it's like I need stability. I don't have to. I could still kind of do shit under the radar and not feel like I'm gonna get caught or whatever. And I'm kind of left to my own, on my own. The thing about working at a high school though is you're having kids. But that's like, enough. Yeah, degrade you. You know what I mean? Yes. Sh- shit. That's a last shit. resort. Like, if you're like, I don't want. But my point was, I don't want him like you. Starting there, <laughs> no. That's where you end, and not where you start. You're over there, like it's like an apprenticeship for you. <laughs> it's my internship. <laughs> I interned. I interned in my high school as a janitor. You got this guy Joe the janitor writing you referrals. Got some custodial experience. <laughs> what are you guys working with? What's that wax? Is that a two forty? What is like, wax? What Stubbies. kind of wax you guys using here? Is that a primer? You put primer down first. <laughs> This guy make your floors look like fucking mirrors. This Ed McGowan, uh, dude. I remember they had a, uh, they were having like a big, uh, uh, some big wigs were coming. Superintendent yeah. was coming, right? And it, we had a whole roll thing. the red carpet out. For yeah, these yeah, guys. yeah. And we, man, I was buffing Get those funding. floors. I had to work late. I was buffing. <laughs> they <laughs> let you meet the big wigs. I was buffing the floors. No, but I go in, um, and man, I shine that third floor up. So fucking, my, uh, when I walked into Spanish class and a teacher, and she was the hottest teacher I've ever had. You know what I mean? Like the teachers that you wanted to bang. I, yeah, we all, yeah. you know, it was an all boy score. So oh, everybody wanted to bang this big. Yeah. And uh, she comes and she goes, Eddie, in front of the whole class, Eddie, those floors look fantastic today. <laughs> oh, shucks. And Ms. I was like, and Ms. everybody Diaz started was... clapping. <laughs> <laughs> you got up and took a bow. <laughs> I was like, thanks. I was hat in hand. So embarrassed. It was so embarrassing to have like the hot woman that I've you know know that you I will never be more than a janitor like how, you know masturbate over as a 14 year old like you know a high school kid and then her <laughs> talk about my janitorial prowess <laughs> so everyone say congratulations to Eddie he <laughs> threw the big touchdown pass no. no 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 he got a nice shine out of the, those old asbestos <laughs> tiles <laughs> do we have any road stories I have this road gig story but I don't know I got a bottle thrown at me once. A beer bottle. Shit. But I feel like it's a longer story. I don't know if I want to get all into that at the end of the show. Like I, I'm going to tease some of these jobs I got coming up. In future oh, episodes. let's do that. Yeah, all right. It's future uh, episodes. Okay. All right, let's do that list, Eddie. Go ahead. All right. So the first job, uh, dishwasher, 12 years old, Wingwa, Korean uh, Chinese, Chinese restaurant. Child labor law. Child labor <laughs> Dude. 12 years old wing wah. Okay. 12, 12 years old, 12 bucks a night. Do you ever burn your like? Because that's a real industrial kitchen you're working in. So is the water set at a temperature because they have to meet certain food codes where a 12 year old yeah, would well, like, that burn place his skin? down by the health department. Like shortly, that's how I lost the job. <laughs> you weren't washing the dishes good enough? No, I went I went in and they were closed. Uh, but, <laughs> like big, like there was a big piece oh, of tape it. across the front. Health inspector. Health inspector closed it down. Uh, okay, what's the other one? No, it was filthy. I had my second job, filthy. filthy. I mean, the guy, t- so they had screen doors, but in the summer, he would take the screens off the door. I don't know how much more air you're really getting through that. It was just, there was oh. so many flies in there. So many and people flies. are eating in there. Yeah, dude. Oh, no. Dude, it's going in the food. Oh. It was so gross. It was so gross. Did you eat there still? Yeah. <laughs> how did I know you were going to say yeah? I mean, come on. Free. <laughs> 
And did we talk have... about the carnies? Did I talk about you the carnies? We haven't talked about it that yet. Was the, that, the, was the, that, was, that was the lost episode. Yeah, that was the lost episode. We got it on the video. Yeah. Maybe, you know, maybe we'll play maybe that. Maybe one day if this ever gets popular. I was door to door salesman for the Bucks County. That's me. I, oh, okay. Move that one up on the list. All Let's right. do that. You having to go how as a kid? As a kid, fourteen years old. Yeah, I was you wearing a, a little suit? Thirteen? No, 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 no. Oh. Just uh, I, like I dress now. Oh. Like I still dress. <laughs> I still dress <laughs> like I'm thirteen. The Iron Maiden. Yeah, okay. hey, you don't forget that story either. Yeah, the we Iron lost Maiden. that one. Oh, we lost. That's the carny. Yeah, that's the part of the carny. That's the carny yeah, story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. But uh, okay, go down. All there. right, so that's good. So that's and that takes us up to janitor at high school, uh, and then we get into some of the. Uh, some of the what would you call that uh, restaurant you know a great artist they have like it's my blue period what would you call the janitor period <laughs> that's my uh this is my janitor period that's a little more that's a blue that's dishwashing my, that's period. a little more blue collar period right and then i step it up into like go, restaurant now i'm a face of the uh franchise tgifs yeah hula hands most cracked out hula hands we get the red rob that's and when TG- you move up and then i peak tgi fridays that's where it's where it's done. That's the peak. Yeah. <laughs> 1998. I got the dates on here too. April 1996. It's like a, the saddest resume. <laughs> Just the resume of awful. Uh, the fact that you are who you are and where you are. I look at that list and I'm like, so good, dude. God bless you. Mm-hmm. I got one on here that says painting with a dude for a week and never got paid. <laughs> oh, that motherfucker. That's, is he on your list of 10 oh, guys? Oh, dude, if I like saw to find, him, I saw him, I'd hit him with my let's car. Let's start doing that more on the <laughs> show. It. Oh. Bring it up. Who's one of our 10 guys? Ooh. Let's do that. Okay, Even good. though that list will be really long, we could start moving, shuffling people in and out okay, of Okay, cool. Yeah. I, I already brought up that one guy. Did I, that was this episode, right? The brought guy. up that fucking guy, the, the baseball card the guy. The baseball card guy. That's this yeah, episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah fuck that guy. That. He's yeah. on the list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got another guy I'll save for next episode. All right. Uh, he's on the list that guy yeah, the guy you're do. talking about let's what's do. his I'm, name this fucking guy I don't remember his name the guy who stiffed you on the house painting money so he's yeah. one of your guys what do you I look would, like let's let's get a picture in our fucking minds you know what he looked like uh, what did he look like he looked like a, just a normal f- fucking piece of shit <laughs> <laughs> yeah I know that guy <laughs> Just a regular. I see that guy in the mirror every fucking pee, morning. Pee, I kill pee. that motherfucker too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you run a podcast with him. <laughs> yeah, you sit next to that asshole on, on rides a lot. <laughs> he drives a car. Yo, that crack in that windshield's getting big, dude. <laughs> that shit. We were. It got. It went from like this little thing when we started to drive, and then we get into it the last day. It's like. This it's like a samurai came in and stood oh, on your hood dude, and, and just it's, sliced it's, your fucking it's really, windshield. It's creeping. Yeah. All right, we should wrap this up. All right. That was a good pick me up. That was good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh Eddie and I have a big tour coming up in Seattle at the end of July. Yes. So keep your eyes out for that. Uh they could follow me at Josh Ricardo and go to joshricardo.com for tour dates. Follow me on Instagram at edmcgallancomedy.com. We'll see you guys again next week. All right. So you can listen to us on all major podcast platforms every Wednesday at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can follow us on Instagram at Working Class Holes. Also, make sure you watch the full show on YouTube. All you got to do is type in Working Class Holes. And please don't forget to rate us five stars and tell a friend. Come on.